So the fight continues for reparations. Black people are still trying to get reparations. There's a lot of people who are against this from happening because they dislike black people. That's the reason why they don't want black people to get reparations. Yep, easy too. Easy, easy, easy. Just jumped over the jump, man. <laughs> that's, that's funny to me, though, and it's real because I resonate with... I was just talking to someone yesterday. My friend Jay Johnson from North Carolina visited. He's a future Olympian. He's, he's training for the Olympics. And he's talking about, like, Ruquan, why don't you have more rich white friends? Like, that's the whole point of coming here is to network with rich white people. And I said, you know... I go into like defense mode and I'm like playing basketball defense, like squatting real low, my arms are wide and I'm like defending myself to say, I resonate not with rich white kids. I yeah, resonate. Right. Say, Have you ever met <laughs> <laughs> I resonate with poor people, man. <laughs> like I love poor people. I love people who, who or e either poor people or people who understand the plight of the poor because I was put here to do something like I have yes. a mission and it is to serve poor people and so I'm not interested in just like manipulating a rich white kid to like help like allow me to sit and talk to his dad to dance for his dad so that I can yeah, make, right. maybe get a donation from my organization I'm interested in understanding mm -hmm. the plight the poor people have experienced by reading the scholars by talking to the people in these communities who to are scholars and so I, two, though, as we think about reparations, there's no way, in my opinion, that we're going to discuss reparations, not just in this class, but worldwide, without talking about God. Especially if we're talking about reparations for poor black people, because for poor black people, in all of eternity, God has been a part of their story. Yes, exactly. Who the God is, or what the God looks like, or how the God is shaped, or what particular text we're reading about that God in, it, it can change throughout the times. But nonetheless, for poor black people... God has always been a part of that story, and reparations have also always been a part of the, the spiritual story for poor black people. And so I'm happy that we're having these conversations about reparations because, you know, Harvard committing $100 million to reparations essentially through the Harvard and Legacy of Slavery Initiative is mm -hmm. a faithful move. It should yes, be, yes. Sh yes, it should be more and all of that, but it's a faithful move in the right direction. We will not effectively as I hear, listen to my classmates talk about their their jadedness and their and their sadness and their uh, disconnect from faith as it pertains to faith in humanity I can relate and some of that is colored by the spiritual expertise that my great grandmother who was born on the plantation endowed into our family to say yes and and even Du Bois said you know you will you, you, the freedom that you want in America will not happen that's what Du Bois articulated to Hampton students and, and faculty. And it's like, we haven't listened to that for whatever reasons. We're still in this like strive for it to happen. And I think that we, I, my, my sort of request is that we would listen to my great grandmother perhaps and think about, because what I've also found, this is my, based on my research, is that black people in the academic experience, some of them, not all, some of them have become, um, uh, in opposition to any idea of like waiting on God to deliver a promise. Mm -hmm. There's become like a disdain for like waiting on the Lord. Our, our ancestors waited and didn't do anything, which, which which is not true. But still, I understand that perspective. But my call is for us to to wait on the Lord still. While we put our feet on the ground, Frederick Douglass said, I prayed for God to free me from slavery, but it wasn't until I prayed with my feet that I became free. Pray with your feet, that's an interesting image. So yes, we should like actually build the fund. The guy you named who's in, who's in, uh, Kenya. in Kenya, who's building uh, tech and re essentially revolutionizing the sport of finance. Yeah, it's really interesting there. We should, do, we should do that, but also maybe there's a way that we wait on God. And I wanna hear, how do we wait on God? What is your vision about well, that? What are your suggestions? I'm not very religious. Well, I'm not religious either. I don't think religion is a qualification to suggest spiritual ideas, but my ideas are that 
we would the same way we read Baldwin as a real as a sacred text, we would read the scriptures as sacred texts. And we would reason for ourselves. Like we're geniuses. We don't need like even a pastor to come and mediate. We need to just look at the scripture and then pair it with historical data and then start to reason and start to discuss and start to understand. And I don't think that we must be at seminary to do that. Because it, it, it makes this argument that like Oh, the, the spiritual people are over there, and then there's the rest of us. Yeah, right. My argument is that the conversation about God has to be only because it is the exist. It is a part of human history <laughs> to come and study Baldwin or any of these scholars that we're reading without talking about the God that they worshipped is maybe foolish. So my suggestion is for us to just read it together. Not necessarily in this class, mm -hmm. but I mean at scale. Why don't we read it together? You know, maybe we do this thing like on Twitter. Somebody read the Bible and then we screenshot it and then we like critique this particular part of the Bible. But we, we there aren't courses as much as should be, this is my theory, having these conversations and pairing it with historical data and then bringing in the scholars who know the information and then discussing the plights and things like that and taking it to that. Why does it always have to be a study? on reparations when it comes to the indigenous black Americans. Did y'all take out a study when y'all gave all our tax dollars to Ukraine and uh, Israel and uh, Egypt and uh, um, African countries? Did y'all take out a study when y'all gave all of our tax dollars and social security benefits to the Ukrainians that's here and the Afghans that's here, the Somalians that's here and all the rest of the doggone immigrants that's here? We were the people that fought for all these rights for everybody else to get here and take advantage of the American dream. We ain't say come take advantage of us. Why does it always have to be a study? Why, 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 why? Oh, I thought America was going to go broke if they helped out the indigenous black Americans. But they're not going broke helping everybody else out and using all our tax dollars that we invested into the system. To shut us up, you want to lock us up.